Welcome to the Big Geek Podcast. I'm your host, Ron Avis, and sitting with me on the couch to my left is my co-host, Nick Wright. And in the middle is a returning guest, Martin Reimer. And today, we're going to be ranking the top 10 Game Boy games. Here we go. We're doing the Game Boy, uh, our first portable uh, show. Um, Is it really? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. We've done several consoles, and we kind of, you know, we we no we kinda, Game Gear. No. Well, I doubt there'll be a Game Gear episode. <laughs> oh, whoa! I'll I'll I've come got, back for a Game Gear episode. All right, all right. I have my Game Gear still. Yeah. I still I'll, have I'll my Game Gear games. actually too. Yeah. But I can't honestly think of like. 10 games that I really, really liked. I could think of a handful of games. Anyways, this is not about the game. game. <laughs> this is about the Nintendo Game Boy. Sonic. <laughs> we got a Sega fanboy right here, and I can appreciate hey, Sonic that. Sonic Chaos was pretty good. On yeah. Here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to take this over. This is going to be a Game Gear episode. All right, strike it. Everybody get your Game Gear stuff out. We're just going to do a game. This is a big... This is a big Let sign. us know in the comments what your favorite Game Gear games were. Well, you know... Get it, us ready for the next show. We've done a lot of Nintendo. We did do a Sega Genesis that, you know, Martin unfortunately wasn't a part of, which probably should have been since he is a big Sega fan. Yeah. I mean, I would do a Master System list before I would do a Game Gear list. I can't help you there. Yeah, no, I can't. I oh, I love my Master nope. System. But no, Nintendo Game Boy, it's the first con- uh, portable handheld... Uh, uh, show we've done and uh you know it I, I don't know why we just kind of blazed through a lot of the consoles we've done a couple shows dedicated i feel like to just the classic consoles yeah. uh like you know the newer ones uh even so, atari 2600 yeah we've even done atari <laughs> oh, 26 wow. well that was the granddaddy i mean it makes sense we go back and do that yeah. one and it's not like we promised we were going to do chronological order but game boy was a huge huge deal right guys oh massive oh, yeah absolutely <laughs> The adult world is designed to keep us moving. And while this may make us more efficient, it's not exactly a party. Luckily, technology has produced a cure. It's called a Game Boy, the personal game-playing system from Nintendo with lots of sports, action, and puzzle games to choose from. And it comes with a puzzle game Tetris. It could change your outlook. I'm sorry, sir. Your flight's been delayed. Cool. I mean, it came out in 1989 and, you know, was in stores until 2003. So that's a massive, massive span of uh, 14 years. My math isn't fantastic, but... Yeah, I remember the first time seeing, like, a picture in a magazine, and, you know, it's a a screenshot of, like, Super Mario Land, Mm -hmm. and just thinking, like, how amazing that is to, like, be able (sighs) to play Super Mario Brothers, like, anywhere. Oh, yeah. Well, if you think about handhelds at the time, and we had, like, Game & Watch, and we had... Yeah, just those little... The Tiger. Tiger, you know, those games. yep, yep. It, the infamous Tiger games that I mm-hmm. love mm. <laughs> to hate on. <laughs> but yeah, Game Boy comes out, and uh, it, it's during the heyday of the NES. Not quite the Super Nintendo yet. Yep. Um, in 89, the Sega Genesis was just getting off its feet. So, you know, it, it was already scaled back as far as graphics goes, the dot matrix graphics that they made work for a long time somehow. And for the time, you know, you're like, this looks great. Oh, because yeah. you didn't yeah. know anything. There was no color yeah. LCD or no. LED. That didn't exist, so. Yeah, the Game Boy came out, and uh, it was bundled with Tetris, and uh, just took off from, from the jump. Like. Which that game right there, I mean, bundling that in, that that sold it for millions Absolutely. of people. That was an absolute genius yep. move on their part. Uh, securing that license and then bundling it in to sell at the Game Boy because who knows what it would have done with that Tetris. And I remember yep. playing it like at the kiosks, like at Target or you know wherever. That you know in the electronics department they'd have those little setups that you could play Tetris. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember too. Uh, I, I remember you know seeing a Target for sure and being like totally amazed. And uh, you know, I'm thinking back. I, I had a Master System and I had an NES and. Um, that's probably what I had at the time. So even though the Game Boys were pretty reasonably priced at ninety dollars at the time, is that what they were? They were ninety bucks. Yeah, wow, that, that's a, a steal for that it's, time. It's actually. hella that's reasonable a, if you yeah, think about it in today's game? dollars. But once you factor in inflation, I, I did the math on all of these systems to you know to for perspective reasons, and it's one hundred and eighty dollars in today's dollars. Ah, so that you know, even though ninety doesn't sound like a lot nowadays, it's like 
a couple of games to us now, but mm-hmm. if you think of it in terms of it was like 180, that's pretty, you know. Yeah. It, it wasn't like a, you know, frivolous, trivial purchase, you know. You, yeah. It was like a big deal. For a portable at the time with a game. And know, I remember it too coming under out. Under $200, that's not unreasonable. No, not at yeah. all. Not at all. And, uh, you know, it, it, it did not launch with Super Mario Land, but it, it was soon after. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, that it, it was Nintendo, and that's really all it needed to be yeah. <laughs> at the time. Nintendo was king. And uh, the Lynx was the only other, I think, system that was attempting to do a handheld at the time. It came right. out on 89 also, but it was a bit pricier. I actually have the cost of that. at. Uh, it was giant. It was oh, big, yeah. and it was color. Yeah, right. Which is going to, there's going to be a theme with the Game Boy and its competitions probably throughout this episode. Is it's always been the weaker of the, of the systems. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what Nintendo in general, right? Yeah. They always take the uh, more economical route. Didn't it have kind of a thing where, like, if you're playing a two-player game, like, the buttons were, like, on both the top and the bottom. Oh, the links? You can, yeah, the yeah. links that you could just, like, hand it to somebody, and they didn't even have to, like, turn it around yeah. because yeah. it was just, like, face Yeah, they, 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 it was, like, flipped or yeah. whatever. So, yeah, you're right. You could just, like, technically hand it over to a guy, and then you wouldn't, I mean, it wouldn't rotate. It wouldn't need to. Designed for the lefties kind, out there. Kind of like a cocktail arcade cabinet that yeah. when it's player two's turn, it just, the screen flips over. Yeah. Yeah. The links, like, seemed, like, on paper, like, a really good idea. I mean, Atari was still trying to, like, compete and hang on it was like their last gasp well yeah. unless you count the jaguar, <laughs> jaguar. <maybe>. yeah <laughs> but, but yeah do the, the links, math guys <laughs> <laughs> the links costed um it was uh let's see what do i have it was 180 dollars then oh wow oh wow which is like 360 nowadays so it, and, and that's probably because i'm guessing because of the color screen oh yeah because of the color yeah. screen for sure um and it was bigger because what do you happen to know the price of the Game Gear when it came out? The Game Gear was one hundred fifty dollars. Okay, which would be like two seventy five nowadays. Yeah. So that one felt a bit more obtainable. I remember. But it like was thinking, more mainstream. You know, Sega was more popular for sure at that point in time than Atari for sure. Was. But uh, yeah, the, the Game Gear didn't come out until uh, I want to say like ninety one or something like that. Lynx yeah. came out the same year as Game Boy, so they were like going head to head with Nintendo. Yeah. It was a no contest. But I remember thinking the Lynx like looked amazing, but it was just no way you know I could ever get it because yeah, it was just well it had Ninja Gaiden going yeah. for it. Yeah, and for it's sure. like oh, the only wow. console to ever have like the arcade version of Ninja Gaiden that I remember. And I remember too, like really? EGM and stuff. Like they they always gave it like decent scores. Um, you know, it, like Game Boy, you got you would get decent scores. There'd be the occasional like nines across, but yeah. for the most part, like a Game Boy game would get reviewed in the fives and sixes. I mean, it was usually not uh, great, yeah. and like Lynx was just usually like it felt like always like a grade or so higher. Hmm. But I didn't recognize any of the titles. Like it came with that like air that fighting game, like Blue yeah. Lightning or so, I forget I what it was know. called, but mm. it scaled and looked kind of impressive. But it had a version of Rampage, didn't it? Probably, yeah. Oh, really? Wow. Probably. Okay. But then, of course, there was also the NEC Turbo Express. <laughs> yeah. It, that was amazing, too, because yeah. that was just like flat out just the console. It was a Turbo Yeah, you could take farm. the same cartridges and put it in. Yep. Yeah. I owned those, not at the time, but later on I owned it. Oh, God, that was my was like awesome. fantasy. Like, you know, I wanted that. I, I joked with Nick in a previous episode. Like, I felt like the rights kind of were rich because they had a video camera. <laughs> <laughs> like, to me, like, you'd have to be rich to own, like, a Turbo Express. Oh, like, there yeah. was just no way. I only saw With the them. TV adapter. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah, that TV tuner. So it's like, man, you could get that and have, like, a portable TV. <laughs> and I remember it. That was a big seller. And, and we used to, I remember, like, we were looking at it at Babbage's, and we wondered, like, if you got the TV tuner, could you hook up like another console to it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, damn it. Yeah, that would be awesome. Play a Sega Genesis on it. Right, right. <laughs> but, yeah, so they did have them like at, at Babbage's and things like that. But I remember seeing at Toys R Us behind that one aisle that always had the really expensive uh, like items, you know, like a robot or a guitar or like a camcorder. <laughs> but then that turbo would be in that behind the glass, and I would just yeah. like pass it like it's in a museum. Just sitting there for years. Yeah, I mean, it might as well have been a museum. I was never going to get my hands on one. But that thing sold for 250 at the time, which wow. is like yeah. 475 nowadays. Yeah, that's so, like the Neo Geo. Yeah. 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 So like you know when I when I first saw these prices, and I'm like. Oh, okay, like 90, 150, 175, 250. That doesn't sound that bad. But I remember distinctly back in the day thinking it might as well have been a $2,000. Yeah. And then when you take that inflated price, you're like, ooh, even as an adult, like 500 bucks for a like a handheld, yeah. I wouldn't do it now. Yeah. Probably yeah. not. I mean, I would think about it hard, I'm sure. Yeah. 
I'd think, you know, like, oh, I've moved this around. I didn't buy this for a while. You know, dip out of the kid's college fund. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but no, the, there was the Game Boy always at that very, very low-end entry, like, cheap uh, price. And it was cheaper for a reason because yeah. <laughs> the whole, you know, draw of a Game Boy was the portability of it. But in, in practice, you couldn't hardly play it anywhere right. unless you were, like, in direct sunlight right. yeah and even if you were outside like it couldn't be too much sunlight it would drown it out right um, right we would be on trips to like we're driving to chicago and so i'd be playing like you know the zelda on the game boy yeah and, you know it would start getting dark and you're oh, like yeah you're, you're going, like, <laughs> over, like the, the street lights is the right. i mean i worked the hell on that contrast <laughs> wheel as best yeah. as i could you know like you got to be an expert in that contrast. And then oh, yeah. like, finally a point where the sun just went down too much and you just turned it off you're done yeah, you yeah. just got to turn it off you can do <laughs> but so, thank god for all those like add-on attachments right oh you had the one with the light and the magnifier right the Which game we had Eric several had very yeah. unique kind of hilarious it, it on site like as accessories like yeah, yeah. the yeah. one with the gigantic magnifier it had like the speakers and, coming out yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it turned into a huge entertainment center basically right. by the end of it it was almost a transformers <laughs> yeah so, you know, like your Game Boy, and it, you might as well just hook up your NES and play it there. Yeah. But, um, it, it, you know, it didn't, it, it never cheapened or lessened the thrill of being able to just like kind of like kick back in your bed and like just like mm-hmm. on, lay on your back and play the game. And yeah. I, I remember like playing games like Zelda for just like hours. Except you couldn't lay on your back because then you're you're getting a shadow. On yeah, you can't the, see the, the screen. Yeah. So then you flip over. Well, yeah. <laughs> Again, you, it, there was a sweet spot, I guess. Yeah. Kind of like how the 3DS had that sweet spot when it first came out. You're like, it's 3D. If you like hold your head in a certain way and you don't right. move and you you know hold yeah. the controller in a certain bit. Uh, but yeah, the, the Game Boy was amazing. And everybody had a Game Boy. It, it was as synonymous with you know young people as like a Walkman. So Mm -hmm. uh, during those 14 years that it came out, there were many, many different iterations that we saw and they kept improving upon it. Uh, This started out with just like the the big daddy right here. This uh, the DMG, I guess, is what it's called. Gigantic fat daddy right here. Yeah, Yeah, the brick, the brick might as well be called the brick. This was the original. And then, you know, like indestructible <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty tough yeah it, wasn't there like a fire or something like a an image like a famous image of like some really like a bomb went off or something and then like somebody's game boy oh, was still, and it still worked yeah, yeah it still worked yeah, i mean yeah. it was charred and looked terrible but yeah, it's still like all melted looking yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but so but that sucker came out for you know years and years and then let's see you had uh the game boy pocket came out after that you know mm-hmm. like after mm-hmm. five or six years so yep. that was pretty sweet. Um, then you had the Game Boy Light. Well, I mean, look at the size comparison here. Yeah. I mean, they really shrunk this guy down. I remember, Nick, I saw the Game Boy Pocket at your house for the first time and being really blown away by how much smaller it was. Yeah. Yeah. Because I always just we'll had, for the longest time, I just had the, the brick, the Big Daddy, the DMG. But, and then, but before that one, though, There's then the there color. was the trickery, but, you know, the Game Boy Color quote, unquote, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where it was still the black and white Game Boy, but they just had the color shells. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they did. They, they pulled a fast one on us with that. Uh, but yeah, the colors came out around the same time as those lights, I guess. The not the pockets came out in 96, the lights came out like 98, and then the colors came out, I think, in 98, too. But, and it was around 98 that games like Pokemon started coming out, so that gave like the life of Game Boy like you know, the, the tail end of the Game Boy lasted another five, six years to the popularity of Oh, that definitely Pokemon, extended it, right. Which, you know, we're doing our ranking of top ten Game Boy games, and none of us had a Pokemon game on there. But there's no denying that Pokemon kept Game Boy alive for nearly I think a we decade. Just, we, we missed that, you know, we were older generations. So. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I, it just wasn't anything that I got into. I remember seeing in magazines that it was this big, huge deal. And, you know, to me, it was just like a role-playing game. And I recognized that Final Fantasy was a great big, huge deal. But, I mean, this was like on another level. Yeah, we just never really played role-playing games all that much. Yeah. Now, there's there's a couple that I have got into, but as a whole, not so much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even the ones that I get into, like, they're really kind of just like baby's first role-playing games. Mm. Yeah. They're, They're not really true, like, 
you know, like like a JRPG. Yeah. Like, I don't know, I think a Dungeons role playing. Dungeons Dragon style. Role yeah, like dice. hardcore <laughs> Japan, like Japanese yeah. role playing right. games. Like, that's a really a role playing game, not yeah. games like South Park, Stick of Truth. And right. <laughs> or, like, uh, but it's role playing enough. Like, you know, you, you could argue that a Madden game is a bit role playing, <laughs> or even like a yeah. game like Destiny is a bit role playing. But mm-hmm. uh, Pokemon was definitely that sweet spot for a new, younger generation. It was cute. It was, you know, the whole had the whole collecting it thing going for it. And, uh, you know, from all all accounts the games were really well done too so but this isn't sure. a pokemon you know history we're uh we're, we're doing our top 10 and uh even though like the game boy went a long time and uh had a nice long life and over a thousand games in its library <laughs> wow in a in a time when you didn't have digital downloads mm-hmm. yeah crazy over a thousand yeah. games i think most of our games are like probably up into like the game boy color era most of our games are like in that pre, uh, like right around when the pocket, like by the time the pocket was coming out, I feel like we were just getting it to replay the games. You know, yeah, we, we yeah, weren't discovering right. new games at that time. We were just playing because you also but, had the color the game pocket, boy. Even though yeah. the pocket was in black and white, it was so much clearer. Yeah, right? it was a huge, huge difference. Mm-hmm. It had a lot of things going for it. Like it, it didn't have that blur, that famous Game Boy blur. It, it wasn't sure. really that spinach green kind of color. It was more it, black. It and was white, more it? of a straight black and white. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. just real crisp looking. Yeah, that spinach green. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's very iconic of the Game Boy. Um, but you know that that's kind of our general overview of the Game Boy and all of its. You know iterations and and well the, the peripherals like you there were many different peripherals we mentioned the like the cheaper ones that kind of helped you play the games but then you had stuff like the printer and the the yeah, camera the that you camera. actually plug in back and, when webcams first started coming out yeah you know, these are like the first hit. selfies like people were yeah, yeah really they were things. yeah and uh, you know you just printed it out on the paper like it looks like a like a like one of those like tax like you know calculators like an accountant has yeah, like or for whatever receipts at the yeah. grocery but, store but i mean you can't you know you just can't undersell how like, much cooler it made a game boy like yep. they just kept advancing on like the technology that was already there nintendo if if they're known for anything it's quality and of course gimmicks yeah, mm-hmm. they love their gimmicks, right. and every now and then, like that hits. You know, like you'll get like a Nintendo dog or something like that. We're just like, I can't believe that worked. <laughs> uh, but that was more like a Game Boy Advance game, though, wasn't? It? Was that no, DS? No, that's DS. Much DS, further down the road. DS and 3DS. We definitely got to do like a DS episode because that. I mean, yeah. DS is like the only probably portable that matches the Game Boy in terms of success. I guess. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that thing lived a long time too. I let, feel like. Let me ask you guys: Do you have your original DS, the no. the gray the silver one? one? Yeah, yeah, I do. do you? Yeah. No, yeah, I don't. I got rid of mine. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I should have kept it. But well, another thing too, like just with me, I, I kind of there was a dead period of gaming for me where mm-hmm. I actually sometime after the Game Boy Color came out and before the DS, like I didn't even own a Game Boy. Like I never owned a Game Boy Advance. Wow. Uh, like I missed that whole like bl- that purple Game Boy Advance that was around the time of the GameCube, and then that really awesome clamshell like SP. Oh, the, the SP yeah. was amazing. I loved the way the it looked, but I mean, I totally missed out on that. Oh, and then the man. DS came out. I know, like there's a whole bunch of games that like, I'm always micro. like wanting to play on. Yeah, the micro, the Game Advance micro, yeah, that the was micro. Fun. Yep, I missed out on that. And uh, towards the tail end of the DS, even I didn't even get on the DS at first. Like towards the tail end of the DS. Like, around when, like, I want to say, like, well, Brain Age wasn't the tail end, I guess, of the DS, was it? It was towards the beginning, I thought. Like, uh, maybe not at launch, but you know, maybe I, a year I or two yeah, after. Yeah, I don't remember. I got it. Yeah, but yeah. I, yeah I don't remember. That was it, huge. Brain it was. Age, it was man. huge. I mean, it, Brain Age. Talk about a gimmick. That was <laughs> Yeah, that was it was. But it was, like, also kind of, like, cashing in on that whole thing that the Wii was cashing in on, where, like, they were trying to get all levels of gamers, like adults, mm-hmm. you know, not just younger gamers. And, uh, you know, I was probably in my late 20s at the time, maybe even early 30s. And, uh, you know, I was like, I guess feeling like I was really getting back into gaming. Like I even bought the Wii, like really not even to have it at first. Like I was just going to like sell it. But I I ended up getting my hands on one and was surprised that I got one. I was camping out to get a PS3, as a matter of fact. And I got the Wii on the same night. But then I started playing like, well, I saw that people were having so much fun playing Wii bowling. And I was like, I got to have this. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So I, I ended up keeping that way and I still got it. But I, I think that kind of like started like a new, like, a, like I had an Xbox and a PlayStation 2, but 
Nintendo was missing from my life. Mm-hmm. And I did get a GameCube too, but that that just did not catch on like I would hoped it would. Even though it was a really excellent system. That's another, yeah, had another very show good I would graphics, love to do yeah. on a GameCube. Maybe the last time Nintendo was truly on par with its competitors graphics wise too. Yeah. Because they all came out around the same time, I feel like. Because GameCube, yeah. in my opinion, was had better graphics than the PlayStation. 2. They seemed cleaner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They had the anti-aliasing versus PS2 didn't. Yeah, the GameCube probably was the last time that Nintendo was. They've never been like above or ahead of the gamer, but I mean, yeah. like, I feel like they were at least on par. And ever since yeah. then, they've oh, just yeah. kind of been like a step behind. Yeah. And they're fine with that. They're totally okay with that. They've been saying it for years. Like, we don't. We're not looking to be like a computer. You know, we just right. want to focus on gameplay and, and innovations we want to be us we're nintendo that's what we do first mm-hmm. party games you know that mm-hmm. kind of thing um but nintendo the game boy back to the original topic at hand um had a lot of great games a lot of great first party games or a lot of really interesting third party games um and it it was just really like an nes a handheld nes yeah. i always felt like you know it felt yeah. that way mm-hmm. um all right so uh, we're, we're gonna do our actual definitive ranking we each kind of like pulled together some games that we thought were great and we took that list and then we kind of did our own top 10 and then we nick ran it through the spreadsheet and, <laughs> the, and number we got cruncher. A, yeah, <laughs> the number cruncher and we got our top 10 and a couple of uh honorable mentions that yep. you know because what we'll usually do is pick a couple out and then we came up with 10 so we had two out so we'll start with the honorable mentions right away and uh did we decide what was 12 and what was 11 uh, not sure if we. I, I'd have, have to that. look on my yeah. spreadsheet. I, yeah, and well, they probably tied. They probably to be tied because it was probably like he and I. Because was it you that you did uh, the Gargoyles? Quest? I did the Gargoyles Quest. Yeah. yeah. So Martin, one of yours was Gargoyles last. Quest. Oh that. yeah. So you know that that was one of your games that you had picked that you thought was worthy of like yeah, the top ten. It, for it sure. was definitely a very unique action RPG type role playing game. I don't know if it was a sequel or a prequel to uh, Demon's Crest on the Super Nintendo. Mm, yeah. It was kind of uh, related to Ghosts and Goblins. You know, instead of the hero, you're like the Well, it would have come out before that game did on the Super Nintendo. So maybe I think so. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, that's a good point. Um, I didn't get a release date for Gargoyle's Quest, but it was for sure one of the first generation yeah. games. Yeah. I out. remember seeing the advertisements like all the time, like in magazines and whatever. But... Yeah, it was a Capcom yeah. game. So oh, yeah. It was pretty, never, pretty pushed, yeah. pretty big. I never played it. Though. I definitely recommend it. Check it out. You know, and, and the post in the comments, your thoughts of that game. I'd be curious to to hear them i love the go the ghouls and ghosts series and yeah. uh, it, it's really odd that it took it wasn't until years later after that way after that game was out during its first initial run that i realized it even had anything to do with castlevania not castlevania uh, ghouls and ghosts yeah i didn't even really realize it but now that i see that little demon i'm like oh yeah he was yeah. like a little like character in those games yeah, yeah. i just I, never I no put it together the time either yeah like i never paid attention that it had the capcom logo that you know it was them that made it yeah i just remember feeling yeah. like why would capcom make this a big deal you know but capcom took gambles i mean they you know they they were known for their like disney licenses games but i mean they're also like obviously known for games like Mega Man. Mm-hmm. yeah uh so like they they did come up with some pretty into unique games yeah. and made a franchise out of them yeah unfortunately that wasn't really one of them and they even had Mega Man on the Game Boy. Yeah, which they didn't did. make our list. Didn't but, make our list, but yeah, yeah there there were like um, it was a pretty good little translation though. Yeah, it, they were odd. It's like they were like little mini versions of the actual games. Yeah, like, but then they had an actual full on exclusive to Game Boy game. It it didn't mm. usually have like the full set of the Robot Masters. Seems like it would only have like maybe four instead mm. of eight. Mm. If if memory serves, it's been so long. But it they, lo- it looked awesome and it played really but well. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely a good example of what a, a port could be on a Game Boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. yeah, the Gargoyles Quest um, that is that has that ever come out on any of the virtual consoles? Um, I, I think it may have on the Wii. Of course, uh, but that might have been it. Yeah, the Wii had like everything. <laughs> yeah, they even dipped into some arcade games, which was bizarre. Yeah. yeah. I remember playing like Golden Axe on the Wii Virtual Console. I oh mean, yeah, like, this is the arcade version of Golden Axe. Yeah, I mean, it even had like Turbo Graphics 16 on yeah, there. I mean, totally. oh yeah, it, it just 
<clears throat> Neo Geo. I mean, <laughs> they didn't care. They were making no, money hand over fist, which is, seems odd that the Switch still doesn't have a virtual console. Right? Like, you know, it's just so weird. What are they waiting yeah. on? Mm-hmm. But they, man, like if you look at the uh, release calendar for the Switch, like every week, like five or six games are being released. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at least one of those games looks interesting. Yeah. Like an, a game that just came out recently, I'm really interested in. It's called Owl Boy. Oh yeah, yeah, that looks really good. That looks awesome. Man. Yeah, I can't wait. Like, did you guys play Celeste? I've, I've seen. No, Owlboy. I didn't. It's it's very good. Owlboy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I yeah, can't wait to very, pick that up. Good. It's a little bit on the higher end price wise for those independent games. It's like twenty five, which is not mm-hmm. a lot, but yeah, Celeste, guys, I'm telling you, that's one of my favorite is games good? of the year. It is so good. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful game, and it's it's really challenging. Uh, you die a lot, like constantly in that game, mm. but. The cool thing is, is like every level, every screen that you advance to, like if you do die, you start at that screen, like the beginning of it. Okay. So it's very much a trial and error game. And I'm like, this is not the Switch show. <laughs> but, <laughs> but my point is, you know, like there, that, um, where's the virtual console, like for the Switch, for seriously up. Uh, but yeah, Gargoyle's Quest was one of our honorable mentions. Yeah. Uh, Nick, you had one on your list, I believe that was an honorable mention. Yeah, I had a. Uh... You know, Mario Picross, Picross, I don't know how you pronounce it. I've always said Picross, but it could be Picross. Yeah, I I don't, I really don't know. Um, If anybody does know, let me know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't think anybody's going to be like a jackass, like, it's, it's Jif, you jackass, not (laughs) Jif, like that kind of thing. (laughs) But, uh, I mean, you know, there's not really a whole lot to be said for that, but it was just a fun little puzzle game. You know, you, you use the clues, like you've got that grid and yeah. use the clues based on you know the numbers like it the yeah. numbers will tell you how mm-hmm. many spaces you can like chisel in yeah like mm-hmm. it, yeah. it'll say seven and but then the, on the like the the there's the vertical axis but also the yeah. horizontal so, axis like, so you know well, it has to be just right yeah so like you know coming it like wherever that cross point is that you can kind of tell like where to chisel and make the little picture and pit cross games are still popular today like i mean they're they're on all your ios devices and i bought the switch Picross game that came out a few yeah, months ago. Oh, yeah. It's really good for mm. like the 20 bucks or whatever that it cost, 10 bucks. I don't know. It's it been like Pokemon, Picross. Yeah, 3DS yeah. has had Zelda, a couple different versions. Uh, you know, it, it's like yeah. some, it, it kind of reminds me of that um, Sudoku puzzle or whatever. It's in that same kind of game. Yeah. But, yeah. but to, you know, the Mario Picross is an example of how insanely well puzzle games played on the Game Boy. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. They, they couldn't always land the you know the ports every time, but they could. You could almost always count on like a quality puzzle game coming out. Yeah. Well, and I think where it, what made them really strong too is like usually with a puzzle game, you know, like that that it's just a static screen that's not going anywhere. Yeah. When it's like Super Mario Brothers and it's scrolling, you know, and you you're not going to strain your eyes curve. all that yeah. much on yeah. a Mario. That's Brothers. that's true. I just maybe just another mention of puzzle game that I really enjoyed was Cubert. Oh yeah, uh, that was that was pretty awesome. What about that kicks? Yeah. Was it quicks? Kicks? Nah. Yeah. Oh yeah, there, <laughs> <you go. laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah, so th- those types of games played really really well. Uh, maybe a game that wouldn't play great would be like a Pac Man. Like did Pac Man like was it the whole maze on the Game Boy or did it kind of like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pac Man? What else you got over there? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> or did it you, did it focus could, on a part of the puzzle? You, you could uh, you could choose. It, you could either have like a really really tiny where you could see the entire maze at once mm-hmm. can you hand me like i guess the pocket oh not your chinese <laughs> <knockoff>. <laughs> like, which one? Oh, yeah <laughs> got to got to mention this <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Hard wall all right all right all right this, so, this is like i know this is an audio and a visual podcast but martin's this got this is it. the uh, i guess i'm being known for like the Chinese uh, knockoff. Guy. I love it. <laughs> but, uh, and I've actually got next show, I'll bring something. I should have brought it, but it was a, uh, the Bit Boy. I've got one of those too. Oh, so. yeah. Those yeah. look cool. Yeah. They're, yeah. yeah. they're pretty cool. Well, I don't know. I won't boot. It's just Nintendo. It's broke. But this is the GB Boy color <laughs> and uh, can be had from Amazon or uh, eBay, wherever. So it's got a couple games built in. It does have. Um, Super Mario Land, DuckTales, a few of those. And then also are these aftermarket 18 and one carts. Um, <laughs> some have Pokemon. Uh, this one's got the Zelda series on it. So uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. This has a pretty good screen on it. 
um, for the for the price, it's around 40, 50 bucks. It's a lot cheaper than trying to modify a Game Boy Color. Oh yeah. Um, because this is true backlit versus the lighting on the side. So uh, definitely like, check it out. I love now too that there's this like resurgence of people who are modding their old Game Boy games. Like we have a friend Chris who put a backlight in his old. Like he insisted on buying the old Game Boy. And yeah. putting a backlight in it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> like, and you were like, Nick was like, you know, you could just buy a Game Boy Light and you'd be done with it, right? <laughs> but no, he had to have, like, was it the Chunky Monkey? Is that what he had to have? I think yeah. it was. Uh, I no, think so. He, wasn't he getting an Advance? He wanted a Game Boy Advance. Oh, was it an Advance? I thought yeah, it was an Yeah, and, and I was I telling know. him to get the SP. Okay, okay. That could be right. That could be right. Um, but yeah, I, I love that there's like this whole like collector's like, you know, it's been 25 years, but people are still like in love with their old Game Boys and want to like make it so that they're 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 playing the old Game Boys. Like they feel that nostalgia, but then they don't have to strain their eyes. They can actually play with it. Well, well, and the cool thing is too, there's a lot of aftermarket uh, like artists that are taking these and you know painting them special designs. Yep, and that's super cool. I, mean, I haven't bought any, but um, I may have to pull the trigger on some. I mean, there were a hundred and. 18 millions of these things sold so like they're definitely floating around there you'll have to like pull up a picture or some yeah. video or something it's hard to and show yeah, you, you definitely that. can't yeah, yeah. No way. can't tell from but, that but. but so yeah you can you can either do it like that where it's real like you know the the maze walls are just a pixel thick yeah, it, yeah. it's actually or or you can do it's a lot more, more low tech in. than i even imagined but it's but totally Pac-Man, totally It's playable. pretty much like a, a Tiger electronic game at that point. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe a little step that. up above that. But. At least Pac-Man probably turns in the direction that he's supposed to. Yeah, he does. does. <laughs> he faces the direction. <laughs> um, but yeah, Mario Picross, or Picross, whatever. Like yeah. that That's a, a game that I remember you, Nick, being really into. And I was almost thinking you might have it really Crazy high on your view. list. Oh, yeah. But it did make it into your personal four, so I mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I'm not. Yeah, I, it, I like it. Yeah. Lots of fun with that game. Because I mean, it's it's a good game that you can just like pick up when you just you know you you got five minutes and you just you know knock out a quick little puzzle. Yeah. It's just it's mm-hmm. just one of those just relaxing kind of just pick up and do something games. For sure. Okay. Uh, well, let's go ahead and get right into the top ten. I guess at this point. Um, at number 10, and this is usually Nick's job, but I got the computer pulled up here. <laughs> At number 10, we got Dr. Mario, uh, which came out in December of 1990. And uh, right, boom. There it is. That's one of Martin's, I guess, also. Oh, yeah. yeah this Martin is... picked that. We all love Dr. Mario. Oh, yeah. This That's is actually awesome my game. version of Dr. Mario. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it, it's interesting how, you know, Dr. Mario could work in the black and white, because the yeah. whole thing is like matching colors. Yeah. But, you know, they just kind of use different shades. Black, of yeah, yeah, black, white, and gray. Well, basically. couldn't the Game Boy do something like four shades of a color, something like that? It's pretty limited. I'm yeah, not sure I don't, I don't remember like... how many, but yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you, you can make that work for sure. But yeah, like unlike Tetris, where you're just matching shapes, like it was color dependent. Mm-hmm. So um, but yeah, Dr. Mario is a great game. Uh, I, of course, I remember it mainly from the NES. Like that was an NES game, I believe, at first, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So the, the I Dr. actually played it first on the Game Boy. Did you know? Yeah. Interesting. If I'm not mistaken, we've got our NES version through Kool Aid Points. <laughs> oh man, I love hearing these kinds wow. of stories. Yeah. Like Mark with his was it Prowl or whatever that he got for yeah. Oreo. Or that, something. that was like Ruth's favorite game. And, and in Mario. fact, I think she's the one that sent off the Kool Aid points to get it. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, she'll she'll have to tell me for sure. But yeah, <laughs> thinking about you, Ruth. <laughs> uh, yeah, Doctor Mario is a great game. I, it probably wouldn't have been in my personal ten, but it is really good. Uh, it, probably the second most addictive puzzle game on the game. Yeah. yeah, I didn't really play it on the Game Boy so much, but I did play it a lot on NES. I was excited to get it on Game Boy. You know, like, I, I remember playing on the NES and just, like, really falling in love with it. After first, just thinking, like, what is this goofy game? Like, I remember seeing, like, you know, stuff from Nintendo Power or whatever, EGN. Yeah. And thinking, like, this is so stupid. Like, I why are they wasting the money? Like, the very first time I saw it in that Nintendo Power, it's like, yeah. Dr. Mario. It's a strange crossover, right? Yeah, what is that? Might have been the actual first instance that Nintendo started using the plumber to sell, like, their offshoot games. 
Mm-hmm. Can you guys think of one? Well, there was a golf game that, you know, Mario... Well, tennis. NES Open, and it had, like, Mario on the cover of that. Yeah. But I don't think but it, Mario he mattered. He wasn't, like, so much in the name. Yeah. Has. Mario by Picross. <laughs> well, you know? yeah, Dr. Mario was first, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, now it's nothing. Like, Nintendo does it all the time. Yeah, I right, don't... Yeah. I don't I, it's I like Mickey really, Mouse. It's everywhere, right? Yeah. I can't really think of a game that had him in the name. Yeah. Like, Mario Tennis, right. Mario... Mario Sports, is Missing Mario. is, like, another one of those games that I remember coming out and going, like, if you're... Why what the you heck is that? <laughs> yeah, why would you buy Father putting Mario's name even in this, and I mean, yeah. the obvious answer is to sell the game. Right. I remember seeing that on Super Nintendo. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> yeah, I never bought that. I never even have played it. I didn't either. <laughs> <Me neither. laughs> but, but it is another one of those examples where you know. But I mean, like even in modern day times, like they took the Rabbids license and then put Mario to great effect. Mm-hmm. Well, Mario plus Rabbids is a really fun game. Like I would have no interest in playing that game though if Mario wasn't in it. But it turns out it's a really fun game. You know, I'll have to look up. Wasn't Mario's Missing, like, a PC game first? Didn't it come out on a computer? Uh, I know it was on PC. Yeah, it could have been, like, one of those games that got, And then there was, like, the Super Nintendo. Came out, like, on the Amiga or something at the same time. Because that that really just kind of, like, seems like... It smacks of a point-and-click kind of... But but it seems like one of those deals that Nintendo made, like, you know, how they let, uh... Oh, what's the company? Phillips, yeah, Yeah. with the Zelda series (laughs) and stuff. Nintendo must have been, like, in a bad way or something yeah. that, that year like their, their earnings like they they weren't making the money or something for that quarter and they were like well, we don't care give it to Phillips <laughs> we'll make a crappy game it's terrible we they were care. like we need an education game quick we need to we need yeah. to pay out our bonuses to our uh, our shareholders and, yeah. and you know, whatever uh, but yeah so Dr. Mario great game uh, but I, I do I have equal memory almost Just more so for the NES but I do think of the Game Boy version pretty fondly of that game and a good point on the, how they were able to, you know, take those just different shades of, mm-hmm. of black or, or green, really, I guess in this case, and, and you it didn't affect you at all. Yeah. It worked out just Yeah, great. you could tell. And, and I got to say, too, like, the audio on the Game Boy is actually pretty good. You know, like, the, the audio tunes for some of these games. Like oh, Zelda, yeah, okay. Not the quality, Tetris. necessarily, of the sound chip, but just, like, the... the just the what they the, could the pump out of that thing. Sure. You know, it was just... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, like... It wasn't on par with the NES, but I mean, for a portable at the time, it was pretty good. Those Mega Man games rock just like Capcom was really good at, yeah. at utilizing yeah. the Game Boy hardware, period. But, yeah. You know, another one of the famous Capcom games that's on one of my games that I suggested for the list. You know, the music for that game is legendary on the NES, and it's really good also on the Game Boy. So, good yeah. point, Martin. They, yeah. they really they, they took advantage of uh, what little they had. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is essentially like a calculator you're playing with, you know? Yeah. I remember, like, those really nice calculators being in high school. Like, people were trying to, like, play, like, early, you know, PC games on their calculator. Yeah. And this is not too far off of what a Game Boy actually was capable of doing. <laughs> I had one of those. I, I forget, like, what the uh, model number was. But yeah. Yeah, the, I had, like, when I was at ITT. You could yeah. play Doom on yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had, like, some, stuff. like, version of, like, Super Mario Brothers and, like, some other just little games on it. I guarantee there's a Doom Game Boy game out there. I was going to say. There's got to be. You know, somebody has had to have done that. Yeah, and it's yeah. probably just Doom's trash. Doom's on everything, but, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, like, that's to say, if there were 20 games that released on Game Boy, 19 of them were trash. Because that uh, one thing about the Game Boy is there were some really good games, but I started noticing all these, like, like licensed games first on the Game Boy, it feels like. Yeah. There were a lot of like acclaimed games that were coming but, out. And they always would try to do like the super popular game that there's just no way the Game Boy could even handle, but they right. would try to do it. Like they tried. Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter. Oh my god. Oh, those were horrible. <laughs> it was just such a novelty to have it, I guess, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mortal Kombat 2. Like, I pulled off a Dragon Punch in Game Boy. I'm done. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it took me an hour, but I got it. I got it out. Uh, but you, I bet you did get that Street Fighter for Game Boy, didn't you, Nick? Oh, all, so far, all the ones I had named. I, I <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, well, what about I, Primal Rage. I don't did you get no, Primal I Rage. I take it back. Game? I didn't buy the they first one. They had that on Game Boy. I bet oh you they God. did. I, I think bet they you did. they did. I had it on Game Gear. Oh God. <laughs> well, it was probably yeah. even worse too. At least it was a color, Gear, right? Yeah. With the Game Boy, like it almost had an advantage where like you smushed the screen down enough, like the graphics looked almost impressive. Or if you had like a larger screen, the pixelization seemed more, yeah. you know, pronounced and looked worse. Right. Yeah. So, 
I was always amazed at some of the cutscenes that they could get away with in a Game Boy. Yeah, pretty good. You know, it was really good cutscenes. Like, in some cases, I thought, this actually looks better than some of the NES Count Point cutscenes. Mm-hmm. How are they doing this? Yeah. So, yep. hats off to those guys. Yep. Uh, all right, so we'll move on to our number nine on the list. Uh, feels a bit low for the list, but um, Metroid 2. Boom. There Nick, it is. That was one of your games, yep. I think. Yeah, uh, came out in uh, 1991. You know, I, I don't really, I don't know what to say about Metroid 2 because I didn't really play it at the time. Um, I didn't either. Because really, I, I started out the Metroid series with Super Metroid. Yep. Oh, I see. And uh, I, I remember the first time I ever played Metroid 2, it was like a kid on the bus had it. And he was even like at the last boss and was like, here, you want to try it? And I'm like, well, okay. Yeah, me, a and guy I'm who's like, never played Metroid. Sure, I'll yeah, do it. I've never played it. And here I am, like, fighting the last boss. And of course, I die. Yeah. But, uh, and so, you know, I thought it was neat. But uh, I came to it much later, though. And, and really, the uh, other than that time on the bus, the, really the first time I played Metroid 2 was on an emulator. Mm. And uh, I played through and I beat it that way. And. They have since. Or a virtual console kind of situation. Right. Yeah. 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 It almost seems like it was a sleeper hit. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I bought it back in the day, but um, I, I don't know. I don't know if there was something else that came out at the same time. And a lot of people weren't too sure what it was all about. Super Nintendo was hitting around that yeah, time. Yeah, maybe so that's what it was. Most of the attention was probably geared towards Super Nintendo. Yeah, Super Mario guess. World. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, that, that would just be my guess. But. Yeah. Metro 2, uh, I'm, I'm similar to you, Nick. Um, I'll do you one even better, though. Like, I didn't really get into the Metro games until Metro Prime. Prime, yeah. yeah. Really? Wow. Prime really piqued my interest with Metro. Prime is awesome. And I remember you being like really smitten with Super Metroid, and I just couldn't. I think you even let, let me borrow it maybe one time, too, and I just never even played it. I, I tried it, but I just it just did not interest me at all. Mm. And it's all, not even until nowadays, because, you know, Metroidvania games are, like, a huge popular thing nowadays mm-hmm. with the resurgence of, like, 16-bit sure. platforming games and that stuff. Um, so now I'm all about these Metroidvania games. And Super Metroid, I guess, was, like, that first, like, really honest-to-goodness Metroidvania-type game. And uh, Metroid 2 is similar to it, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I've gone backwards. You know, like I, I had, I, I, it was almost one of those games of like, is there a franchise out there, guys? I'll put this to you. Is there a series of games that you're almost ashamed to admit that you've never played, like that everyone else just loves? Because Metroid was probably my shameful game that everyone seemed to really like, but I always snubbed and didn't care for it. Well, you know, I mean, there's a lot. Yeah. I can't really think of examples right now, but I do know that there are a lot of current. Uh, like series of games that I just never even started playing that and I don't know I'm so much ashamed it's just they're for on current consoles and I just always lean more towards those classics I don't know if ashamed yeah. is maybe the right word but conversations will like turn towards a series of games and you kind of stop talking because you have nothing to add to it yeah, yeah. yeah. It's because well, I don't know anything about that. So yeah, but it's what like a popular Martin? thing now, and you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, it, it's probably the Mega Man series. Ooh, quite honestly, what? like the NES. Ooh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, I got into the first one, but after that, I never really. You started with one, and I, then I started it, with one. Well, well, okay. that's why you don't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, skip. The okay, first one. yeah. yeah. I, I just I yeah. remember I remember renting Mega Man. And I was like, and you wow, I'm not the, into this series at all. You probably went to the Guts Man stage first. <laughs> and it's got like those little those little things with the... It, it, I mean, like, it's like the very first thing in the stage is like super hard. And it's like yeah. those platforms riding on those little lines. Oh, yeah. And then it'll hit that break and it'll just dump you. Yeah. And it's like super hard. And Metroid, or, I mean, Mega Man 1 was hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Two, but you should play two it, though. Two's it, good. It was kind of like the Demon Souls of the time, I guess. It was just like oh, wow. so hard. I don't well, that's know. a series of games yeah. that I don't really know anything about. Them. That's that's one of them. Bloodborne's actually going to be on uh, PS4 or the PS Plus, like where they're yeah, free game. That's a month. good game. I already own it. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm I'm 
kind of like looking forward to downloading it and not playing it and then yeah. <laughs> 10 years from now be you'll like, be frustrated but yeah. it's a good frustration but that that's another series yeah. that like a lot of people love yeah. that I've just never gotten into because well, I don't like to be frustrated necessarily when I play a game and yeah. the original one's coming out on uh, all the consoles and uh, what in is it April it's coming out soon Dark Souls is coming out for the Switch. Yeah, so. yeah. Dark Souls, uh, Switch, Xbox One, and PS4. Yeah. Oh, is that, yeah. But see, that's yeah. one of those, like I was talking about, that's kind of more of a, a current-gen kind of mm-hmm. a new series that I've just never even started playing. Yeah. I'll tell you guys another one. I Metal think Gear. you guys would enjoy that one. Yeah. Yeah. Metal Gear is another one of those series that like I just can't get into. There are lots of people. Love. You know when uh, PlayStation I got when into. Metal Gear Solid yeah. came out on the uh, the first PlayStation. I, you know, I tried it out and and I got into it. I I never really played all the way through and beat it, but I liked it. Yeah. But yeah. I didn't continue really from there. I remember you being a fan of it. Like it seems like you know, because you were you were hot and heavy into the PlayStation at that time, and that was a. The I did game. like it. Oh yeah. And and I even I bought two when it came out, but I never even really played it much at all though. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, going back to Metroid. Uh, Metroid Two is kind of a funny one. It's it's respected and remembered fondly now like there's revisionist history going on with metroid 2 yeah the, well there's fact, a 3ds version yeah that's what i was going came out yeah well there were those pc games that came out another metroid cl- uh po- oh whatever. yeah that remake remake yeah mm-hmm. and honestly that game is excellent and kind of got is. me interested in metroid 2 it's kind of like a super metroid version of metroid 2 mm-hmm and I have played the 3DS Metro game, and it's really good. Mm-hmm. So, and it's it's pretty much supposed to just kind of be like the spiritual yeah. remake of that game. And the Game Boy Advance version is really good as well. <laughs> I didn't play that. The Game <laughs> Boy Advance. There were a lot of. I definitely recommend that. The thing I Was regret about the Game Boy Advance. Metroid, Metroid One. Metroid One. Just... Mission. Yeah. 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 Were there just a ton of Metroid games and Castlevania games that came out like year after year on the Game Boy Advance? I think there were only two on the game. Yeah, I, that's what I was going to say. I'm not going to say. I don't think a ton. I think Fusion two, okay. and, and yeah, Zero. Fusion, yeah. which was oh, technically the, Metroid 4. People loved Fusion. and Because uh, it. it was zero so different, mission. right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, Metroid 2 is our number nine. Uh, number eight is a controversial pick, I guess you could say. It's, <laughs> <laughs> I love this game. At least one person on the, on, the, on the couch here made fun of the other two people for liking <laughs> it. But yeah, TMNT... Fall of the Foot Clan. Yeah, I mean, I like the game, but yeah, it's just, to me, it was just so much of like the Tiger Electronics version of like a Ninja Turtle Ooh, game. Oh, dude. I, hear on the back I of even went back and reason. played it, and because you all are acted like that, uh, you know, I'm giving it too hard of a time, and yeah. I still felt that way. All right, what? dude. Because it's, it's a Game the Boy anime game too. Like, it's I understand that. big sprites, man. I understand. You know, the it, it cartoons is, it, and it all It is that. a big sprite, but it's like, the, the sprite is like, every, you know, naturally every turtle is the same because, I mean, it's like that, it's that way on the Nintendo, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. totally, totally. But, you would expect them to be different sizes. Yeah, I right. mean, you know, I don't expect any different. But it's like, the, the animation, though, they're just like standing there and it's just like their arm sticks out. <laughs> and that's attack. It's like stick out the arm. <laughs> you know? If the, the TMNT fall the Foot Clan, I remember just like salivating. I didn't oh get God, it. I remember getting that. I, I saw that in magazines and being so like it. It's what really kind of pushed things for me to get it. I didn't have a Game Boy when they first came out. Still shots though. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, still shot. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> Was that knife? <laughs> I, I saw the still shots, and obviously, like you know, I, you know me, Nick. I was like the I, biggest turn. And I fan. played through it, and I liked it. I, yeah. you know, I had fun yeah. with it. You could do a hell of a lot worse. You know, it was Konami. It, yeah. uh, it's certainly as enjoyable as the NES game. Not as hard, I don't think, as the NES game that came out. No. But. Uh, and Wait, well, which one are you talking about? The first NES first game? Or the like first the arcade? One. Yeah. The, the hard one. The first the one that... NES game is like super hard. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. The second one was just the arcade game, basically. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I would have part... loved to have had the original NES Turtles game on Game Boy. No. Yeah. You know, I would have liked that. That, that would have been, uh, been nice. I would have been, like been. I was happy with what I got. Yeah. Like, I think I would have been disappointed. But I think that's probably the reason why they went that way yeah. for the Game Boy. Yeah. That game was pretty long, too. The NES game. I wonder if they could even fit that onto a cart, like a Game Boy cart. Doesn't that game yeah. feel really long, the NES? It does feel long, yeah. Um, I think it's because it's so hard. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Like, you can't even get past swimming through the seaweed. Oh, oh God. Seaweed stage is <laughs> devil. 
but yeah, follow uh, follow the Foot Clan. It, it's I admit it's not. It may be the weakest game on our top ten, but the nostalgia factor and the fact yeah. that it just got me so juiced for a, a Game Boy. I mean, I was already juiced. I loved Nintendo, and I was wanting that Super Mario Land, and all that looked great. And I played the Tetris like at Target, like you said, and it was lots of fun. But you know, it was leave it to the Turtles to like push it over the top. Like I really wanted that game. I think part of it too is it's one of the bigger non-Nintendo, you know, character titles that mm-hmm. came to the Game Boy that was pretty popular. And the boss graphics looked really nice. Yeah, they were like Rocksteady looked awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that looked good. Yeah, especially compared to what we got on the NES. You mm-hmm. know, like we, yeah. it just wasn't nearly as good. But I do like the NES version. It almost reminds me more of the comics, right? Yeah. Where I don't want to dump. It's not on it that too art much. style, but it's just it's very. It was more Japan style, yeah. you know. I was thirsty for turtles, and I played that game a lot. Yeah, I mean, I played that NES game a lot. So I, you know, and I, I mean, I played it a lot because I had fun with it. But it was okay. hard. It oh, was, yeah. it was like the quintessential NES hard, you know, mm-hmm. that right. whole thing. Yep. Uh, but TMNT Follow the Foot, great big sprites. Uh, like you said, that was a good point. I really like that you brought up the point about the bosses, and it looks cool. Cool cutscenes. The music was good. Uh, and yeah, and the cutscenes, yeah. I mean, it would look just like the cartoon mm-hmm. oh, yeah. in black and white. Yeah. In black and yeah. white or green or whatever you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I was really impressed with that game. It felt like they put a whole lot into that, that cartridge for a Game Boy game. So, uh, and there, there were a couple other Turtle games that, like, in my opinion, even though they came after the first one, I don't even think they're as good as the first one. And they're all really kind of drastically Boy? different, too, I feel like. Yeah, for the See, Game Boy. I don't even know what other game, oh, well, turtle games came out on the Game Boy. Yeah, there was a 2 and a 3, which yeah. I've played on uh, emulators since. Yeah, same. And, um, yeah, I, I, I Maybe didn't Maybe on like, a small screen. I didn't play them long enough impressive. to really get a, you know, a good feel for them. But yeah. uh, every one of them had a very different feel, though. Yeah, hmm. definitely. Um, so, you know, that's our number eight and it's mostly on the backs of Martin and I, and, and Nick admits <laughs> to liking it. Okay. He, he softened. I feel like a little bit, like he really, yeah. when we brought it up was hammering us hard. Well, I did, yeah. You know, I liked it. I just didn't like it. Like a, a top favorite. Yeah. Like it. Okay. So to you, like Picross or even Gargoyle's quest is more deserving of a game. Well, I've never played Gargoyle's quest. Okay. So, okay. But Mark, yeah, we'll go play it. Yeah, I, I need to. Yeah, yeah, me too, actually. I, I've i played like a few seconds of it just to boot it up in an emulator. Like, mm-hmm. you know, but that's it. Now, I, I will say probably that, uh, you know, that Ninja Turtle game definitely better than Street Fighter on Game Boy. <laughs> God, <laughs> no, I didn't say much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's enough. Uh, number seven on our list is uh, a much better game, I think we can all agree, is DuckTales. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Mike has got it pulled up. Yep. Came out just in, like uh, the NES 1990, very much the same as the NES. Like the music's all right there. I think it's missing a level. I don't think it's the whole game. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't have uh, which one? The moon or no, it's it has got the, the moon. moon. Yeah. And it's the rainforest that's missing. No, it's got the, uh, it's got the Amazon, Transylvania, African mines, the Himalayas, and the moon. Well, I can't even. What else think was there? Maybe it does have the whole game because I'm only thinking that there were the five anyway. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, so but it, it's it's pretty much all there. Like it feels good. Like bouncing around on the uh, Scrooge McDuck's pogo, like his cane feels perfectly great, just like it did on the NES. That game's that, hard too. Yeah, it is hard, but that that's the game that was. It felt so tight. The controls felt very responsive. So I in a lot of these Game Boy games or Nintendo games too, for that matter, I felt like I would die a lot just due to you know unresponsive controls. Ducktales to me felt really tight and. Like, my copy of DuckTales is right here. <laughs> um, you know, this is the game that I was hinting at, that the music is actually really good. It's nearly on par with the NES. Yeah, Those Game Boy games always had a bit of a tinny sound to them, I guess. But... I need the bad. moon. Yeah. The moon is, like, my favorite. I think that's a lot of people's favorite, too, though. Yeah, the, the background music. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, DuckTales, uh, the, the Capcom Disney Game Alliance was always one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. You know, Rescue Rangers we talked about. 
Uh, real, I mean, you know, those two games, I guess, is the extent of it. There were many other games like Tailspin. And- There's the moon. Oh, and then, you know, there was Darkwing Duck. Darkwing Duck, yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, if there was a Disney afternoon cartoon, they Capcom put a game out for yeah. it, basically. In fact, I, want, I really want to get my hands Except on that. Except for Gummy Bears. That wasn't a Disney afternoon, though. That was a Saturday morning. <laughs> yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> but uh, I want to get my hands on that, and I wish it would release for the Switch. It's kind of, I was hoping not hope, but they had that Disney afternoon package that came out for, like, Xbox and, and PlayStation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where it's, like... Tailspin and stuff. Yeah, it's got yeah. it's got Rescue Rangers 1 and 2, I think. Oh, wow. DuckTales. And there was a DuckTales 2 also, but I don't think it's on the collection. I could be wrong. Yeah, there was a DuckTales 2. Mm-hmm. I don't I think that... it was on Game Boy, though. It was definitely NES. No, nah, well, I don't think so. Yeah. But is it the DuckTales 2 on the NES? It's super rare. There's like one of those cuts yes, that are the, super yeah, rare. Yeah, it's DuckTales 2. Okay. Yeah, I saw it at like a comic convention I was at last year. Okay. It was pretty expensive. <laughs> what were they asking for? I don't remember. Don't remember. Yeah, a couple hundred, I'm sure. But, at least. Yeah, it was oh, wow. in the box. It was pretty cool. Oh, oh wow, nice. they had the box and everything? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, I, I don't have too much to say about DuckTales. I've already mentioned it once in another show for the NES, so I, I feel like I've talked about it quite a bit as, as it is. Martin, do you have any other additional thoughts that you might want to add to DuckTales? Did no. you have it for Game Boy? Um, I don't think I had it at the time for Game Boy. I had the uh, NES version, but you know, playing it later on, it's like really good port, basically. I mean, they did a great job. Yeah, they did. You know, one of the better impressed. ports. Yeah, definitely. Didn't lose a whole lot with the Game Boy port. Okay, well, we'll move on to number six. And uh, this feels like it might be a bit low, too, but it also just goes to show the strength of the top five, too, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, number six on our list is Super Mario Land. Oh, yeah, okay. Which came out in August of 89, uh, just, just a month after the release of the Game Boy. And, uh, you know, it's... <laughs> there it is. Martin's got it pulled up. A super fun game, but a different game. Yeah, they, very strange. Yeah, like the very first time you jump on top of like a what you think is a Koopa Troopa, and it turns into a bomb and yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it starts to flash. Yeah. And you're happening? still standing there because you're like, "What's going on?" Right, right. <laughs> uh, it's the only Mario game that I wasn't a Shigeru Miyamoto game, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was I, some other guy. Yeah, it was some other was. guy. In, in my moto might have had like some input. something really good, by the way. Oh hell yeah, yeah dude! It's it was very strange. I mean, it had like the Sphinx and Egypt. And yeah. Oh, but I love those. I guys. really like that. Cool. Yeah. And don't forget, like, there's like levels where you're in a submarine. Oh, yeah. the the horizontal shooters. Yeah. That, I like those actually. They're really fun, but it just doesn't feel like it belongs in a Mario game. You know. I don't know. I. I it it was very different, but I felt like it it fit. The late '80s mm-hmm. was the heyday of the the you know horizontal shooter anyway, so it kind of like shouldn't be too surprised that they would just put a try to slip in a shooter into a game in the late yeah. '80s like they did. I think they were trying to mix multiple different genres mm-hmm. and say, hey, it's a Mario game too. Yeah, just to get people on board. I guess the, the one thing that I did think was weird was that the last board was one of those shooter boards. There were only two board, yeah, two I think boards in the whole game that were shooters, and mm-hmm. it was that submarine one, and, an and then the very last one was in an airplane. Yeah, and, yeah. And that seems strange that uh, it's like, oh, this is this is the last board. Oh, okay. Yeah, it should. It feels like it should be a dungeon, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, they they had you know full creative freedom to do whatever they wanted to do, and a lot of that stuff worked really well. Like the music was good. Yeah, and that that theme yeah. song you pulled up. I, and it, you know. it retained a lot of the major things that were Super Mario Brothers and yeah. added new things. Very small sprites too. Yeah, very yeah. small, yeah. <laughs> tiny sprites. Yeah. Uh, the follow up to that game, which we're going to get to later, I guess we'll see. I'm pretty sure it will though. <laughs> much different, you know, much bigger sprites, like almost you know NES like Super Mario three level sprites. Yeah, yeah, you know, it'd be interesting. I, I'll have to like look it up. The how big the sprite is, like how many pixels is mm-hmm. it for Super Mario Land compared to... Versus that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be interesting, yeah. I looked that up. Cool. Um, 
let's see. So yeah, you had you had those turtles. Uh, the they had that Super Ball power up, which oh uh, yeah, the fire flower. That was another thing that like, the very first time you do it. <laughs> Starts it's ricocheting like, off. Yeah, like, that was oh, so strange. Where did, where did it go? Oh <laughs> why, didn't it, why didn't it bounce across the ground? It's kind of like Breakout, you know how that <laughs> the bounces oh, yeah. around the scene. But if you think about it, guys, like Mario, Super Mario came out. Super Mario Brothers, the first one. It was huge. And then we got Super Mario Brothers 2, which was drastically different from the first one. And then wouldn't this be the third Mario game we got? Because Super Mario 3 came out in 90. Yeah, I get, technically, I guess so. Yeah. yeah, so like, we, I guess if you think about it, we shouldn't have been too surprised because we got Super Mario, which was original. Right. Nothing like it before. Super Mario 2, which was so different. <laughs> yeah. And then we got this game, which was so different. So who knows? Yeah. Back in the day, maybe we just thought these Mario games were going to be like these weird anthologies. You know, we're like, what's it going to be next? Is it going to be, you know, who knows? Oh, and, and also like when you get a Starman and like the Starman comes out of the block and it's coming down and, and you're expecting to be able to start chasing it. Like it'll start bouncing along the ground. Yeah. And it just kind of like falls through the ground and it's gone. <laughs> I remember that too. Like, what the hell? Like, it's break yeah, on. Where'd it go? <laughs> That's dirty. <laughs> What are they going to do next? They're going to put him in a doctor's lab coat or something and like have him toss pills and you know, like, <laughs> like this is Mario. Maybe. So, yeah, okay. Not so far fetched. Uh, but yeah, Super Mario Land's a pretty fun game. Uh, I, I would like to play through that game. It's been a long time since I've played just not just the first level. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I have this fun. It's a good game. It yeah. really is. Is it? Yeah, yeah it usually when game. I pick it up and play it, like I get to like that first. A dungeon where there's like you're fighting that sphinx and yeah. then I kind of turn it off after that point get yeah. your fill right there yeah. you're like yep I still like it because I think <laughs> right after that is one of the submarine levels yeah I think there yeah. is a submarine after that yeah I usually turn it off after that one I'm like okay. there's only I think four worlds it's a short game yeah, yeah. It's, it's not real long yeah but I mean a lot of those games weren't huge back then I mean you know it makes sense that they're just going to be on these little tiny cartridges uh, and it's it's just more amazing that you got much bigger adventure games like Final Fantasy type games oh, on yeah. Game Boy. And I don't, I don't remember is there two or three like sub worlds like you know one don't one remember. and one two. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm almost thinking there's like only two, but I I don't remember for sure. Hmm. Is there a water level that you're not in a submarine? N not that you're not in a sub. Okay. That that is the the sub is the water level. Gotcha. I gotta say, I didn't really miss that. Then I guess those water levels were always my least favorite. Yeah, yeah. I kind of flew through those. Oh quickly, yeah, well, you know. Yeah, you weren't savoring and looking no. for secrets for those levels usually. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, Super Mario Land is a really awesome game. It's a pretty good first attempt, and uh, it, it was a sign of things to come. Like Nintendo was all in on the Game Boy. You know, oh, they yeah. put their their big mascot, their big character into the Game Boy and then they and the Nintendo made a habit of doing that with most of their systems I guess but mm -hmm. uh, it, it showed us that you could have like a full on complete adventure game on this little Game Boy so oh yeah alright uh, we'll move on to the top 5 um, which actually the, I remember when this little game came out being like so like enamored with it like it was so <laughs> damn cute oh yeah uh, Kirby's Dream Land uh, yeah, not awesome that one, but yeah, I mean that's that's a really good game. Yeah, yeah, I remember buying that, and it's a, and that came out in '92. So I'm gonna say that I didn't get a Game Boy until like maybe '91, late '91, mm -hmm. probably Christmas. So, so there were a lot of good games out at that. There point, were some yeah. good games at that point, and Kirby's Dream Land was one of the first games that I remember buying, like with my own money and like picking it up and like not being disappointed at all. Is made by Hal, I think, yeah. who had a history with any NEC games, Turbo Graphics games. So uh, you know, to see that that they would take like, well, they had Bonk, which was one of my old favorites oh, yeah. of all Love time. That. So Kirby came along and he was great. And Hal actually did a lot of stuff for Nintendo. Now that I think about it, I think they programmed the first like pinball game and some other the black cartridge games, black box games. Mm. Uh, but yeah, Kirby is one of their first characters not mario that kind of branched out and made it big and is still to this yeah. day like making games mm -hmm. yeah that's one of their first like you know secondary third characters that has just stuck yeah uh that's like a very distinct nintendo thing it's cute i, I remember the commercial like there's kirby and he's all <laughs> cute and he's posing recently we compared two superheroes dashing super guy and kirby from nintendo in some ways, Kirby lost big. No big hair, no big muscles, no weapons, nothing. All Kirby's got is appetite. 
Kirby's Dreamland, the thrilling adventure game on Game Boy. Kirby munches, spits back, and floats, saving glorious Dreamland. He's Kirby, and he packs a mean bite. The Kirby's Dreamland, only on Game Boy. You know, he's got that gimmick where he slurps the stuff yeah. up. And uh, it just feels so good to play. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm very excited for that new Kirby game that's coming out for the Switch. The Allies, the four-player game that's coming out in March. Oh, I don't know if I've seen that. Wow. It looks super cute. And yeah. it's a, a four-player game, so I'm, cool. Logan's going to be all over that. Yeah. But uh, there, there were a couple of Kirby games that come out for the Game Boy. Uh, that tree is like in every it's game. Like every game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even in the new game, I was watching the trailer, and sure enough, I assume it's level one. You know, yeah, yeah. That, that tree, <laughs> right. that tree pops up, and I just remember like with that so tree. Like, I, I don't know. know. I mean, it's just cute. Yeah. It reminds me of those old style like Cuphead type graphics or uh, art. Yeah, right. You know, uh, and they way before Cuphead made it like interesting and put it into a game. Like Kirby mm. had that aesthetic. Yeah. Uh, and I really enjoyed that he could like kind of fly. He would inhale the hair. Like, oh it, yeah. It felt like a, a very easy game to pick up and play. Oh yeah. Mm. I never felt frustrated playing Kirby. And you, you know, it's one of those games you could just kind of beat over and over and over again. It was such a unique game mechanic too. Like I don't think there's any other game that's kind of copied that where you can like inhale or adapt. Yoshi. Well, maybe. I mean, it, it kind of. It kind of utilizes like that Mega Man style mm. of like steal your enemy's weapon. Yeah, that's kind a good a point. Thing. Yeah, good call, but, Nick. But it it's totally different though in that you you can also just kind of like inhale air and and float and fly around now. Oh yeah, and even use the air as a weapon. Right. Yeah. yeah. Blow the air out yeah. and do damage. And, yeah, it's yeah. like a little cloud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because I, I would do that all the time. Like if my health was low, then I would just like. Inhale there and just kind of like fly <laughs> right, over everybody, yeah. and out, like you know, dodge everybody, off. you know. Yeah, but it's another game with really tight controls and uh, good that, graphics and audio too. And another I mean, thing too, guys, it's a uniquely Game Boy um, invention. Like it came out on Game Boy and then it came out on NES later. Yeah, and that's oh, that's yeah. the interesting thing wow. that it started on Game Boy. Mm -hmm. And then branched out. Branched out to many mm. other things. So uh, its roots are on the Game Boy. So mm -hmm. like that's another cool thing about Kirby. Um, but you know, it it's to Smash Brothers to you know I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in a cart. Well, it's, he was in a cartoon. Was he? In a, well, not a, I was gonna say a cart game, like a Mario Kart game, but that, those are mm. just for Mario characters. There was a Kirby cartoon. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, oh, yeah. I don't remember that. I guess I shouldn't I be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> He's awfully cute. I mean, I, Kirby and King DD. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, when did what did that come out? Like, was um, it a Saturday morning kind of thing? Or? It might have been late nineties, early two thousands. Was that when they were just putting cartoons on or characters, video game characters, and everything like Sonic and you name it? Like, there seemed to be a cartoon, maybe like Earthworm Jim. Yeah, yeah, it was around Jim. That. I think it was around that era. Yeah. It was just like. You know, it was like the 90s where, like, if you were a comic, you could get a sitcom, you yeah, know? Like, it, it just didn't matter. Like, if you're the a cartoon was a little campy, you yeah. know? But I'd definitely check it out. I mean, you guys might like it, yeah. Cool. Maybe, I mean, I'll probably have to be forced to go look for some stuff on YouTube yeah. and play it along when Martin's talking about <laughs> it. <laughs> just to prove that it exists. Yeah. Kirby, 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 that's a name you should know. Kirby, 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 he's the star of the show. He's more than you think, he's got maximum pain. Kirby, Kirby, Kirby's the one. But yeah, Kirby's you know Kirby's Dreamland is a really fun game. I love it, uh, and like I say, I, and, and the, another thing too about these Kirby games is they rarely miss. Like they're almost always fun games. Yeah, like there was that one that came out for 3DS where like you're in a little mech suit. That game is super oh, yeah. fun. Oh yeah, I haven't played it. Oh my god, it's a really fun game. It's hmm. super fun. So you rarely miss with the Kirby game. So yeah. anyways, that's our number five. Uh, moving on to number four is Donkey Kong. Or yeah. Donkey Kong 94 is... Something. Yeah, as it's like, um, I guess, kind of better People known, didn't I call guess. it Donkey Kong 94. Just, just yeah. in order to differentiate it, not confuse it with like the arcade yes. Donkey Kong, yeah. you know, so... Because yeah. it, it is kind of a... It starts out like the arcade game, but then it kind of branches off and has kind of its own thing. That was the really neat thing about that game, is you're right. It was like a fun, playable version of, of the arcade game at first. But yeah, then it and just then became it its own. Into like this puzzle game where you gotta like get the key over, you know, to the door. Mm -hmm. Lots like. and lots of levels, really good replayability. The controls were good. Mario kind of starts to develop that 
acrobatic skill oh, yeah, set that he, he has adopted. Yeah, flips and handstands yeah. and everything. Yeah, I, it's a really good game. You think about those 3D Adventure Mario games with all those moves that he does, but he kind of like started with that Donkey Kong game. Yeah. And obviously Mario or Jump Hang. And it was like the Donkey same Kong. like kind of controls to do it. Like, you know, the backflip, like if you're running forward and you pull back real fast in the jump button, yeah. mm -hmm. it, it does it the same way in the 3D yep. games. Yeah, that, now that, that game really had legs. And that was also one of those... Now, this game was a big deal, too, because it came out alongside the... Uh, oh, it was like the Super first Game like, Boy. Super Game, Super game Boy, yeah, yeah, for the, yes, the Super Nintendo. The, the colors and everything. You got those little color palettes, which, mm -hmm. you know, was kind of a neat gimmick where you could play older games. Uh, and get a color palette. Like, Metroid looked kind of good yeah. on the Super yeah. Game Boy. But, yeah, this game was... It came out alongside that. So, And I remember that being, like, a really cool thing because now for the first time, you know, emulators were not a deal at the time. Yeah. So right. you could kind of replay all those old Game Boy games and not strain your eyes. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was, like, such a big deal. They were like, oh, man, let me pull out all of my Game Boy games now so that I can play them on the TV. Yeah. yeah. In color. Yeah. You it know, was like, like playing palettes. In a time now, and it's very common to see games, like, being remade mm -hmm. so that you can play it on new systems and not feel clunky and old. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. I mean, it didn't it didn't enhance any of the gameplay. It is essentially the same game, but it did give it that extra polish and color. Mm -hmm. um, so that that was really interesting. I, I, I have a fond memories of that game. Yeah. <laughs> also, too, this was kind of pre uh, Donkey Kong Country, so. Um, you know, it's another one that they tried to bring out on Game Boy. Oh, just, God. Well, some people really that. liked that, was that horrible. game. <laughs> was it bad? <laughs> Well, if you had if you played it on the non color, mm. it was really hard to see anything. Right. On the just color like, version, it was a little bit better, but it was so everywhere. yeah, it was still a mess. Yeah. So they were doing that pre-rendered graphics on a Game Boy. Yeah. You just kind of couldn't cut it. I mean, it was a miracle that they could do it on a Super Nintendo. Then it had like banana yellow cartridge. It had a banana yellow cartridge. Yeah. yeah. I always loved when they did those multicolored, like different colored cartridges. I'm surprised they didn't do a gold version of that game. Yeah. But um. Yeah, to get a yellow version of it. Was that the only game they did a multicolor, like a different color for a cartridge? I want to say there's a red game. Well, Super something. Nintendo had like Doom was red and Maximum Carnage or something. There were some yeah. red Super Nintendo games, but I'm trying to remember, was there a red one for game? But maybe they did the cartridge for. I, I know there. I don't know for sure while I'm sitting here talking about it, but there had to be a Doom for Game Boy. <laughs> there had to be. It, maybe it was red. Um, but yeah, so Donkey Kong 94 was a great game. It kind of, it was like saying hello again to an old friend of a Donkey Kong. And yeah. Nintendo was kind of dusting off that, that, that property. Yeah. Somewhat. And that, and that really promoted the, the super Game Boy player. Yeah. I mean, that was, you'd see in the magazines or the videos that was, that was right there. Right. We hadn't seen Donkey Kong in anything in a long time. I don't feel like. Yeah. It, it was yeah. like his big comeback. This is big yeah. comeback. And then of course he came back big time and. And it's what started him out wearing that tie, too. Oh, yeah. He's always got that necktie now. Good point. So, you know, this is something that, that was, I mean, it was designed to sell Super Game Boys, but it was also a unique Game Boy thing. Yeah. Like, Actually, on the, the label, it says Super Game Boy Game Pack. Does it now? So, yeah, it was yeah. promoted for that. Well, Nintendo does that kind of thing. I mean, even with the Game Boy Advance, they, they yeah, promoted like, versus Pac-Man. Even though like some of these older games would work on the Super Game Boy, they didn't have like a specific color palette mm -hmm. like like Donkey Kong would, that it was built for that. It also had a special a frame. Yeah. 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 And like a little bezel a little borders. Or, yeah. border. Yeah. And the other games, yeah, like this, generic this games, one was just had for the Super Game Boy, too. Oh, well, I, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, Mario, cool. Mario Picross. Cool stuff. But yeah, Donkey yeah. Donkey Kong 94, awesome game. I mean, it was just a really solid yeah. game with awesome gameplay. Mm -hmm. It was a long game, I feel like. It had several levels, several worlds. And uh, I don't feel like they've ever been able to tap that formula in any of the games. They've, they've made games similar to it, I feel like, on other consoles, other handhelds. I feel that, like yeah, the they, March of the Minis yeah, or something Yeah, I was going to say, they've done like those Mario versus Donkey Kongs yeah. where it's yeah. very similar. But not quite as good. You know, like it just doesn't yeah. have that same magic, I don't right. think, as the original Donkey Kong. Yeah, I can had. agree with that. So, uh, really, a really special game. And uh, great to see Donkey Kong back in the mix again. Mm. Which brings us to our top three. Um, 
Maybe no. Okay, no, there's one other. Well, I can't say even Stephen. This is a really good game. <laughs> yeah. Super Mario Land 2: The Six Golden Coins, uh, which came out in '92. I remember buying that with my own money. It was. I think I just started working at Hardee's. At the yeah, time. I was gonna say I, I remember <laughs> you working at Hardee's and, and we and we, we walked over to the mall, right? I think I picked yeah. it up at KB Toys. I remember that. Yeah. KB Toys. KB Rest Toys. <laughs> R.I.P. KB Toys. All toy stores are gonna be that way soon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that, I just remember being blown away by that game. Just it, it looked oh, like yeah. Super Mario Brothers three, mm-hmm. and uh, the yeah. big big sprites like a la TMNT fall well, the flood. But it was yeah. even really more detailed than Mario three. Like the Mario sprite, I mean, because he you know he had like the like pupils like the whites of his eyes. Oh and yeah, all, yeah. yeah. It's know, very detailed. Mario yeah. three was just like you know two just black pixels. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's a couple years newer too, I guess. Than but. But it was one of those games where it's like, I can't believe this is a Game Boy game. <laughs> like, they're really oh, yeah. pulling something off here. Yeah, it was like game. really, really zoomed in. Mm hmm. Yeah. But it didn't yeah. feel tight. Like, sometimes, like, you would sacrifice, like, I guess it's just not everybody could design a level like Miyamoto could, I guess. Mm. He was just the master of, like, level design. But uh, many of those Game Boy games, like, you, you could either get, like, decent sized sprites and a wide open, comfortable, you know, level. Or you get these giant sprites. It just wasn't very fun to play because you're bumping into shit everywhere, and it just right. doesn't yeah. feel right yeah. either. But that game felt fine. I gotta say though, because um, I really, really liked the raccoon Mario power up from Mario Three. One of the best. I, I wasn't such a fan of like, the rabbit ears. Yeah, like, that was weird. all you could do was just kind of float. Nobody yeah. remembers. No, nobody has nostalgia for the rabbit ears, no. right? <laughs> you couldn't do anything with the rabbit ears. You could just jump and then. Slow fall, <laughs> <laughs> like glide these little down. pixel things or whatever. You see at KB, like you got me the Stimpy or whatever for Christmas. Like you don't see the the yeah. There's no rabbit ear yeah, Mario. No Mario. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, and, and I guess maybe they were starting to run out of really cool like gimmicks anyway for Mario. Like they've never been in as good as the Mario. Like the cape was awesome. Which you know, it's interesting just how well that you know everybody does like the Raccoon Mario because they did try you know different things here and there in different Mario games, and fairly recently they've gone back to the Raccoon Mario and it's, you know made a one or two games. Yes, yeah, Super Mario Land again. for the 3DS didn't that have the Raccoon tail back again, um, or was it something else? The, the 3DS one, it, it was the Tanuki Mario, which oh, okay. was basically the Raccoon Mario right. just with the Tanuki suit. I do love the Tanuki too. Not nearly mm. as useful as the Raccoon tail. But... He didn't even really have all the powers of the Tanuki suit, because he didn't even turn into the stone statue, statue in that one. So yeah. it's like, That's I don't lame. even know why they did that. I don't... Hmm. I, I think just because people like have nostalgic feelings for the Tanuki too. Like I've seen people wear the t-shirts of the Tanuki. Uh, and, and really, yeah. the whole purpose of the Tanuki was to turn into the statue, like you said, and it was a right. 2D game, so the enemy would walk past you. Like, there's none of that in a 3D game. That, but yeah, that's what made the Tanuki one different than the raccoon, and they didn't even utilize it. So why not just go full raccoon? But, <laughs> yeah, but then in like the next game, was it New Super Mario Brothers 2? They did have the Raccoon Mario again. I was going to hmm. say, before I said anything about the 3D one, that I believe one of the New Super Mario games had it. But, uh, you know, that Super Mario Brothers 3, I think was, and if I'm not mistaken, it was our number one for all the Nintendo classics. Yeah. Oh, Super N, yeah. So, I mean, that, that game is amazing. I think maybe Super Mario World's the best Mario game, but Super Mario 3, like, I feel like I maybe played the most. I did like the cape. The cape was but, good. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it, which is funny because it just, it had all the same powers of the raccoon. With, Except with you could, the addition of parachuting. Well, and, and you could sustain bomb. flight, too. If you were yeah. really good, you could just keep going and going. In yeah. fact, some I mean, of those later levels... levels using that. Yeah, some yeah. of those later levels to find the key or whatever, like you had to like master Oh, yeah, that. you had to oh, like yeah. dive bomb mm-hmm. and then yeah. parachute up. Yeah. It was hard, but I mean, you, you could like in some levels. Yeah, so the cape was very cool. And, and I don't think they ever used that again. No, I think you're right. I don't yeah. think they've used it since. Maybe they should. Maybe it's time to return the cape. <laughs> I mean, it's Super Mario, right? He needs a cape. <laughs> right, true. Uh, but yeah, so Super Mario Land 2. Um, I, I I honestly can't introduction even Introduction of Wario. Oh, thank true. you. Thank you. Yeah, the introduction of Wario. And Wario actually took the mantle. Which I guess we yeah. never really mentioned Daisy for Super Mario Land. That's oh, the good introduction point. of Daisy. Yeah, mm. Daisy was the introduction, which who's a popular character amongst, you know, especially the kart games. 
in the golf games and the sports games. Daisy's mm-hmm. like a mainstay now. Um, yeah, good point. Nick. She's like the tomboy peach. <laughs> I kind of got that feeling too. Like yeah. I guess it's just the brunette. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe yeah. <laughs> they they get kind of painted into the tomboy. Kind yeah, of. I mean the blondes are like. The it wasn't really so much you know, like, like that. Dainty, you know, <laughs> then I mean she just looked just like a clone of Peach basically. Then right. But yeah, that's true. When they started giving her personalities like in the sports games, yeah, she's definitely kind of gotten that kind of tomboyish kind of. Mm. That's Laura's favorite one to play. She doesn't. She does not care for Peach. Yeah. In fact, she claims she's a dirty racer. <laughs> like a lot of times, <laughs> so she's like, I will not play with Peach. She always goes with Daisy. Daisy's nice. my favorite. And she's brunette, too, so that kind of makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> she would gravitate towards uh, Daisy. I wonder if we're going to get Pauline in some stuff now. Since the um, oh, well, uh, Odyssey. Yeah, I was very, very happy to see Pauline return, like, in Odyssey. From Donkey Kong. And, yep. and they have had Pauline, like, in those Mario versus Donkey Kong games. Mm-hmm. So, I'd like to see more Pauline. Pauline's she's due, man. Especially now that she's been in the Odyssey. She was a very key figure in Odyssey. She deserves to be in the mix. Yeah. So, maybe we'll see in a, if Smash game ever comes out. Like a deluxe for the Switch. Inevitably, it's going to come out. Maybe they'll surprise us with a couple. We'll, we'll see what fight. E3 has yeah, who knows? in store. <laughs> who knows? I mean, when Nick and I did our prediction show last year, we thought it was a just in the bag that they were going to announce the oh yeah 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 we're like oh for sure like this isn't even like an original that's a no brainer yeah, but yeah. They, they did Mario Kart 8 so you know it's coming yeah, yeah. And, and the 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 leak is here too that there's going to be one later this year because Nintendo's announcing their uh, welcome everybody to the Nintendo podcast where we talk everything Nintendo <laughs> uh, they, they um there was a leak saying that around the time of the online service. They're gonna have that game ready to go. Oh, really? Yeah, because that that online service I think comes out in fall, and they're gonna. Yeah. The rumor is, by a very prominent, respectable leaker, that that game will be out around that yeah. time. Plus, they've got to keep the uh, amiibo uh, yeah. craze going too, right? And, and the rumor is that it's gonna include all the stuff that the 3DS version. They're like, you know, like the 3DS and the the. Um, Wii U version had like mm-hmm. some differences. Yeah. It's all yeah, gonna be a few in unique oh, stages. Nice. Mm-hmm. Cool. So they're all gonna be in there together, and they'll be there. Should be a couple of new that's gonna be characters. Huge. Who knows? Maybe that's... we'll even get some DLC. Yeah. Um. Okay. But yeah, Super Mario Land too. Like you said, we got Wario. Wario is now a mainstay. Uh, he was an interesting character. <laughs> uh, I remember seeing Wario. Well, I, I'll take that back. I can't say that I claim to remember it, but. I bought Logan this great uh, Super Mario and Luigi like comic book thing where it's just kind of like a trade paperback of all the Mario comics. From Nintendo Power. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's cool. And it's I awesome. Those. And they they introduced like one of the very last comics. I guess they ran in Nintendo Power introduced Wario. I remember that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of neat that they were they were even back then way back then they were priming him to be a kind of a big deal. Yeah. Um, all right, so yeah, that brings us to number two, the down to the top two games, and I kind of have a tough time myself personally picking which of these last two is actually my favorite game, but it might be this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening. Yeah, oh. excellent, excellent game. Now, this game is. I think I got the book I mean, for that it's it feels yeah. almost unfair to call it a Game Boy game because it feels oh, just well, as long. The, not the DX version. Oh, is that the DX right there? No, no, no that's your GB Game Boy. Uh-huh. No, this is. Oh, the, you got the DX the, instructions. But this oh, is yeah. the regular. Game. The book is the yeah. DX version. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had the DX I've and the regular somewhere. game at one point. Because the DX has much better colors. Yeah. And looks more like, uh, you know, a link to the past. Did it have some additional content to it or something? It had actually a connection with the printer. It had some special stuff. There, uh, you know, yeah. and I want to say there was something at the end that was new too, like a, a new dungeon, dungeon or something. Yeah, yeah there was a yeah. new dungeon. Yeah, well worth picking up and playing again if you if you were to get the color. Oh yeah, the, those DX games like the Mario Super Mario DX was super fun. But uh, yeah, so Link's Awakening. Some people will make the argument that it's the best Zelda game. I don't agree with that, but yeah, I don't know about yeah. that. I mean, it's but people do make that best argument. on Game Boy, no doubt. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Probably, yeah. But it, it looks in well, I can't quite say it l- looks exactly. Colors obviously are the different, but the the style and the and the, the gameplay, the feel of it's just like a Link's Link's uh, a Link to the Past. Oh yeah, it's very close. Yeah. Eventually, you know, and there were the other uh, like Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons that mm-hmm. were on the Game Boy. And I, you know, I still like this one better than those. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, the, the story was awesome in this game. Like, and it just it, it's such a long game, man. It's amazing what they were able to accomplish. Like, this game came out in '93, and probably was the last the big Game there? Boy game that I got yeah. into. On the DX version, it's much better. Oh yeah. I mean, that's very close to you know. It, it looks like Super the Super Nintendo, Nintendo NES version. The DX version is a Game Boy Color game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you know, so and they, I think they, they obviously went back and spent a lot of time optimizing yeah. it, right? And this game's on the heels of, like I said, you know, it's very similar to Link's Awakening, but I was like a year late on Link's Awakening too. Like I didn't, I, I've talked about it before, but when you went to California to visit family one time, you left that game with me and your uh, strategy guide. Yeah. And I like played it straight through. Like I didn't even stop playing it until I beat it. Like it just took me like a couple days I feel like to beat it because having a strategy guide Compared helped. Compared to the, oh, yeah, that's... The, the Game Boy version. Yeah. Red and green. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Big difference. Yeah. Big, big difference. But it actually looked pretty good on this the regular Game Boy. It looked fine. You know, yeah. with the grayscale. It was, it was really good. I, I couldn't complain. That was the version I played, was the original one. I feel like it had all the mechanics from the Super Nintendo game, pretty much. Oh yeah, like, you know, like the tiered levels of like some of the dungeons, you know, yeah. where it would have like a little staircase. Yeah, the dungeons yeah, were definitely impressive. right up there. I mean, I... The, the Super Nintendo Legend, the Link's Awakening, or A Link to the Past, sorry, I'm getting the names mixed up, but A Link to the Past, best dungeons for me. Um, that, that game is just so awesome. Yeah. Like, every time it comes out on a virtual console, I buy it and play it. Yeah. <laughs> I do too. Play every time. And I, I guarantee when it hits the Switch, even though I just bought it like a it. year ago, <laughs> like, no kidding, just bought it before I was waiting for the Breath of the Wild to come out, and I bought it and played it on, the, uh, on my Wii U. Yeah, oh, yeah. just was loving it, man. Yeah. I was just like, God, oh, this game was so it's good. good. It's very God, good. He loved this game. It's a yeah. great game. So this game just came out like about a year after I fell in love with Link's Awakening. So it was very fresh in my mind. And I popped it in, and I just wasn't disappointed, man. This game is the Link's Awakening. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I'm getting the games mixed. <laughs> Dude, I know what you mean. <laughs> you, you know what I mean. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, ex I'm, I'm, I'm warning you guys. I'm gonna interchange those names a lot yeah. because to me they are like so similar. And they were only a couple years apart. So, but yeah, Link's Awakening for the you Game know, it, Boy. And it had those cutscenes too. You know, you were talking about how good Game Boy cutscenes are. It, it would have like those scenes with like, you know, this kind of like Japanese art kind of style, like oh, yeah. close up of like Link's face, you know? Yeah, yeah. it was really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Quality, top notch game. I don't feel like there's a lot I can say to, about Link's Awakening. I mean, it's such a fun, great game. It's, it's Super Nintendo quality on yeah. a Game Boy. Yeah. Yeah, I it mean, really definitely is. the DX version. I, I don't know if it was like a year or two later that they came out with the DX version. Uh, it was several years later. It was like. several years, was I want to say. Yeah. 98 or something like yeah. that. I, I don't know. know. Exactly. Oh, really? Years. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was so a while. Four year, four it it five wasn't years like later. a couple years, I know. Okay, that. all right. I'd have been like blown away if like they'd pulled that off at ninety five. <laughs> oh man, if they would have pulled, uh, if they would have S and K'd me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like, aware of the? Snake? Oh, here's the Neo Geo Pocket <laughs> next month. Here's a Neo Geo Pocket color. Right. <laughs> what? That's okay. I'll buy them both. Because yeah. <laughs> Nick's Nick, <laughs> and he got snicked. Um, yeah, um, just, just all of that game. It's such a great game. It, yeah. It's and, and on a system where you would have been happy to get a NES NES quality port, here you are. You pretty much have a Super Nintendo yes. quality game. Yeah, just light years above oh, and beyond yeah. anything else on the yeah. Game Boy. I mean, we were sitting here talking a few minutes ago. Like Ducktales was such a quality port. Two years later, we're playing like more or less. You know, a leak to the past on Game Boy. Yeah, right. Right, because like every other example I can even really think of, you know, like the Mega Man, DuckTales, whatever, and it, it's just like straight up, you know, sprite for sprite, it's the NES version. Mm -hmm. Wait, and, and granted, you know, the sprites aren't super NES quality, but they've, you know, they've kind of... But they fool you into almost thinking that they are. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, just, it, it, it's it's different than like you know the NES Zelda. Yep. But, I was about ready to but say it's, it's got those qualities of right. the Super Nintendo, really. 
It, it has that Super Nintendo style and look to it. Mm-hmm. I just can't believe that. I doff my cap to you, Nintendo, for pulling yeah. that one off. That was just an amazing oh, feat, yeah. how to get that game in there. That, that's just like people marvel how like, they were able to put Doom on Switch, that kind of thing. It's like, how can they do this? Right. How can you get Breath of the Wild on the Switch? Like, how? Yeah. You know, it's just like, yeah. it's this little system, you know? It's like, it's amazing. It's just a little tablet. Yeah. It's just a little tablet. A mobile device. <laughs> All right, so you you guys like you guys love Link's Awakening. Oh, right? love it! I, I remember actually playing that in the car. Like we both just got that around the same time, so like yeah. we were we were playing it, you know, and we were really close in terms of like where we were in the game. Like maybe just like a few stages away from one another. So I have that fond memory, and I remember <laughs> getting really bad car sick reading the text. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like getting real sick to nice. my stomach. Like you're still playing, but I'm like, yeah, oh. I, I do kind of remember like it. And I was trying to think like, how did we communicate? Because you know, we didn't have cell phones. There wasn't like, you know, I don't. I guess you know, we talked on the. Phone. Yeah, yeah. Line phone every now yeah, and then, I guess. I, I was, I mean, but, I would uh, totally like talk But to I do phone. kind of remember thinking, like, you know, oh, what boss are you on? You know, and I'm on the genie or whatever, yeah. and, you know, kind of thinking, oh, yeah, I'm right there too. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. We, we stayed like really close as yeah. far as progression for a while. Yeah, we were pretty close. Uh, <laughs> it's funny you mentioned like people communicating, and st- I, I remember like playing like the Super Mario game. Like I would play that whole game like on the phone with a friend. <laughs> like, <laughs> like where are you? I'm on this level. Yeah. It was kind of like the infancy of like online gaming, you know, like yeah. versus gaming. <laughs> like right. we were playing each other, but yeah, like we right. were just on the phone talking. That's <laughs> good times. Um, Martin, any any memories that you can think about with uh, Link's Awakening? Anything special that pops into your mind? Just, you know, like what you guys have said, being blown away by the visuals. And then, you know, with the DX version, you know, I'm, I'm going back and replaying that. It's just, it's just almost on par with the, the Super Nintendo. I mean, it's just so impressive. Yeah. Um, just, I don't know what they did to get it there, but it, it was just amazing. Um, I mean, Nintendo's awesome always game. been a step ahead uh, of pushing their heart their own hardware to the limit but that that game i mean was there even ever game boy game that came out after that was as impressive as Link's awakening (laughs) there were no other game boy games really right that was like that was the lone towards the end yeah because even like you know i mentioned those other zelda games the oracle of seasons and oracle of ages it it's basically Link's awakening engine yeah you know yeah. they they didn't really change the graphics at all they just kind of repurposed sprites and you know made a few new characters or whatever and bosses and whatnot but it's it's all the same engine really mm-hmm. yeah well that's the best you can hope for i guess when a game comes out early and it's yeah. the system cycle you can get one more game you know like well you were talking i think about breath of the wilds like i really wish they would just come out with another zelda game for the switch even if they yeah. just even if it's a they, they don't have to come out with a new engine we understand that takes years and years and years to do yeah. so but give us another game like with ocarina of time you got majora's mask towards the end of the n64 give us another zelda game that's cool mm-hmm. <laughs> i'll buy it we'll oh, all yeah, buy it yeah definitely all right um so I guess we'll move on to straight to the number one, which is not going to be a surprise to anybody what our number one is. Um, Tetris. Tetris. Yeah. The, I mean, the we, original. We already game. kind of talked about it, you know, <laughs> yeah. playing it at Target and whatnot. Yeah. But... Yeah. It, came, it was uh, packed in. Here we go. And it and as great as Zelda was, yeah. I mean, there's no doubt I played Tetris the most. Because even if you got a new game for Game Boy and you'd pop it in and play it for a couple of days, weeks, you could just put Tetris back in at any time. It never got old. Yeah, Tetris but is timeless. It's timeless. Yeah. Um, I can still play Tetris and have a great time with it. Martin's playing right now. He'll probably just keep yeah. playing until the end of the podcast. And that's all you need <laughs> is just those squares to even make the game. I don't need you know, any so. gimmicks with Tetris, and they've we know they've tried them all. There, there's been a lot of gimmicks with Tetris to try and keep it fresh. And there's really only been the one, like, re-release of Tetris that I even liked, and that was the... Uh, Which one was that? The, was it the new Tetris or the next Tetris? Whichever one, the next wh- whatever Tetris it was with called, the blocks, yeah. that was on Nintendo 64 with the sweet blocks. That yeah. one worked. That was a gimmick that worked really well. Yeah. And four players, and the N64 was just a four-player machine. Mm-hmm. Oh was, yeah, that's why it was special. I have so many awesome memories of of the N64 being that, you know, four-player 
every game was like four players. Golden Eye. Yeah. I mean, come They've on. tried like so many times. There's been like Tetris 2, Tetris Plus. Yeah. You know, there's so Puyo, Puyo, many Puyo, versions Tetris. never really Tetris got into those. That, yeah, they're just not really quite the same. But the uh, the original the, the Tetris, next Tetris, man. yeah, the original, and then the the next Tetris on that Nintendo 64 were like the two that really stuck for me. Tetris was interesting too because like it was a game that had been out already on the Nintendo as a Tengen game illegally. Like it was one of those games that like bypassed their copyright. Yeah. So yeah. you could buy that game, but it wasn't licensed by Nintendo. And of course, there was a very you know famous in the public eye uh, battle between them, and they had to pull all the Tengen games. Mm -hmm. And Tetris was one of those games. So Nintendo kind of came back. And you know they won the case, and they also like as a bonus like got Tetris, threw it on the Game Boy, and the rest is history. You know? mm -hmm. uh, everybody's got Tetris. It, you know it. it came, like I think the Game Boy came like two different packages. I think you could buy it without a game that came included with it. But I want to say probably everybody got the one with Tetris in it. I don't. I don't remember. Sure. I, I just remember it with. Tetris. It's probably it was like the NES, game, like there was just a control deck version of the NES. Mm -hmm. and you could get it's like it had Mario with it. Like there, there were think, different uh, ways. Super yeah. Mario Brothers, like, but uh, we maybe we should just like, well, pay on our, our, our classic Tetris. Tetris. What, what did what everybody want? Like? It was like the Wii Bowling of its time. But I think Nick oh, sold Game Boy. It's an NES classic. Yeah. Well, so did like the Super right? Nintendo, yeah. the Super Just Nintendo Classic, down. and the NES yeah, Classic in our list all together. You like, name a fad, I still say a game. Hot. I think everyone that's just because like Mar Super Mario Tetris was, was such a huge game. game. Yeah. We played yeah. it so much. You can't even remember. think it. technologically. It wasn't Tetris. the most advanced no, yeah. game. They just go together. The mm -hmm. game that started everything, like cheeseburgers and French fries. I think it's like you say, like while Tetris was on the NES. It's, it's the just, Game Boy like one that everybody it's knows, it's really. Yeah. And it's because yeah, it's true. it was so such amazing. a perfect it's storm. Right? Right? Let's, you know, it's not been a puzzle game. It's okay to the play yeah, on, that's a, right. on a console. But all the puzzle games have come out since then. There's been some good addicting it's just ones along the way, man. It's just like that perfect marriage. You know, and again, I say again, the Game Boy was good for puzzle games, but it was the key to all of them. And I mean, I don't know what it's to say. If you haven't played Tetris, Tetris, yeah, what's awesome. the matter with you people? <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's such an awesome game. Yeah. Easy to pick up. Uh, very hard to. You know, hard everybody to has that anxious feeling when you start getting towards the top. Like, oh, it's fun to like get going with Tetris, and you're lining up your stuff real carefully, and you're mm -hmm. pulling off Tetrises left and right. But then, like at that certain point, like the game starts to push you and get faster and faster. And I almost hate playing it at that point because yeah, I can't keep yeah. my perfect little lines going. And every time, like, I, I'll turn on Tetris and I'll play that real quick, you know, kind of five minute game. Yeah. And that I, I always kind of like slam down blocks, doom, 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 doom. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I leave like that gap for the long piece, you know, yep. to get oh, the yeah. Tetris, oh, yeah. you know, four lines at once. Mm -hmm. And so I'm boom, 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 boom. And then I get Tetris and then I get another Tetris. And then it's when I start screwing up and I don't, and I've got to like cover up blocks like, you know, and I screw up so that now I'm just getting individual lines instead of yeah. four at once. <laughs> you're just then, desperate. Then I'm like, well, I'm done now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Once you start getting those like little gaps down below, it's just not as much fun. But then I just turn it off and I move on to something else. Well, the it's other... like that 90s version of a Rubik's Cube. It's just like everybody had a Rubik's Cube. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that was fun to play for a little while too. But then you get to the point where like the colors are just so out of there. Just like, oh, I can't. This Rubik's cube is ruined now. I can't even play with this anymore. The, the other cool thing about Tetris was that uh, it was multiplayer for the Game Boy, right? Yeah. So you could do the cable connector. Oh yeah. And um, That's something we didn't even mention is the link cable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I remember, you know, yeah, I got a cable. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yep. Who uses these anymore? That you have to actually have to like plug in like a cable wires. To... <laughs> Here, let's try it. You guys gonna actually get a two-player game of, of that while we while we, we sign off? <laughs> there weren't very many games that even took advantage of that. Mm -hmm. cable. I didn't even know that Tetris was one of them. There was like an F1 here. game that oh, took advantage of did it. Did we not have Ron's Tetris? Uh, that's yeah. Where is it? Where... Is that the only one it, we have? It's... Is that the only one? Oh, what, it, uh, is it in here? Yeah, the, oh, okay. th this cool. is Ron's Tetris. Here, you use uh, Ron's on yeah. here. Oh, I got one on here. Right. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to get our Tetrises mixed up. That's right. <laughs> I 
I'd be curious to see if this is a valid link cable. Oh, or this is uh, Martin's. For those who are listening, this Martin is testing out his Chinese knockoff. His GB Boy <laughs> Color. It's his in game, color. His Game Go Boy. Go get boy. one. It's worth it. It's got <laughs> Tetris built in. Come on. It looks just like a Game Boy Color if you just glance, if you just squint your eyes a little bit. Yeah. Now, the D pad is Ooh. a little bit rounded. Oh, yeah. So it's not weird. the best, but um, and, it's the and only complaint. Like select and starter like join together. Yeah. It, it That's not too bad. Oh, you're already in it. Is it connecting? So yeah, I guess I guess it just went straight to it. Look at Sweet. that! Martin's knockoff is actually is it working. works. Oh, confirmation! Yeah, the Chinese knockoffs are just as good, you guys. <laughs> oh crap! You already messed up. I already messed up. <laughs> Damn it! All right, well I guess we're not gonna play Game Boy while people are like, we're not gonna waste your time. We'll just this is a good way to end the show, I suppose. <laughs> As Martin and Nick are like heated in exchange in a heated battle. game of Mar or Tetris. Oh, so that's how I know like where you are. There's a line on the side over here. Yeah. So, oh man, you're like way up there, aren't you? All right. Well, that's been our uh, Game Boy <laughs> ranking of the Game oh, Boy. Oh, you just did a Tetris <laughs> top yeah. ten. Uh, just to just to recap, as they keep playing, we had uh, Doctor Mario at ten, Metroid Two at number nine. TMNT Follow the Foot Clan. Number oh, eight. Jerk. <laughs> number seven, we had DuckTales. Yes, uh, number man. six, Super Mario Land. Uh, five, Kirby's Dream Land. Uh, Donkey Kong 94 at four. Uh, Super Mario Land 2, six golden coins at three. Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening at two. And number one is Tetris, of course. With uh, special honorable mentions to Gargoyles Quest and Mario Picross. I've been your host, Ron Avis alongside my co-host nick Wright, and thanks again martin for joining us and uh we'll have to do with that game gear episode soon we'll just go right, right into another portable <laughs> conversation next we'll do the atari links and the game gear and well none of us have the atari links what am i talking about neo geo pocket okay neo geo pocket slash game gear i've got that and the sega genesis snowman nick can you bring in your nomad yeah, I've got one too. Don't, man, don't make me you, cry. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Why did you bring that up? <laughs> Why did you have to bring that up for? Thanks I for joining us, everybody. Head. We'll see you next week. Bye. See you.